oh, God can never use me. I am the worst, most miserable, you know, creature in the world. I'm just going to stay home and have a pity party. I'm not going to, God can't use me. Well, he sure can't, as long as you have that attitude. As long as you uh, continue to allow Satan to have his way with you that way. Yeah, this Jerusalem road, this road from Jerusalem to Jericho can be a difficult road. Some live broken lives because of uh, parental failure and the enslaving habits that they picked up in youth. Now, I'll tell you what I'm not about to do. I'm not about to tell you that you're a poor, miserable creature because it's your mommy's fault. No. But I will say this. Even though I made way more than my share of mistakes with my kids, they have a great God in heaven whom at one time in their life they came to understand the need to trust as their Savior. Amen? Hey, raise your hand if you've ne- any parents who have never na- made a mistake, never said something, never done anything that they regret. Good, because we'd have to put you on the internet if you did right now. Can I tell you, I, I, look, at my, I look at my kids and I think, my, oh, my. Look, they're, of course, we're probably going to be doing something terrible now that I'm actually saying this, but they didn't turn out half bad despite all the mistakes that I made. But I will say for you and I, some of us, uh, I'm 55 years old, and I know guys my age that are still harboring ill feelings or, or struggling with something that their mom or their dad did. And I'm thinking, how do you even remember that, man? I can't even remember... I can't remember what happened in 1990, and you are telling me about, oh, and I, you know, this wasn't right, and that wasn't right, and, and, and they have attitudes and issues, and some of them, their parents are dead, and they're acting this way. The, you know what? Are you ready? There's a, there's a scientific term that we use, clinical term. Get over it. Get over it. Move on. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And also... Don't forget, there are some of us who have picked up things from our family, from our parents, and from others. Uh, amazingly, we, we seem to have not caught on to the good things they were doing, but we picked up some of the bad things, and, and we've never let go with them. So it's, it's a time for real self-examination, for, for the you know, do what we say we do when we're talking to the Lord. Lord, examine my heart. Show me anything in me that doesn't honor you, that maybe I haven't allowed myself to see for years. I'll tell you something that you've heard me say many times. Uh, Those of you who have known me for a number of years, I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit of God that, that we can supernaturally continue to grow in grace, to change. You want to know what we should never say as Christians? We should never say, that's the way they are. They're never going to change. We should never say that. How dare we say that? How dare we say that? We have no, we, we, are, we are dishonoring the scriptures when we say that. You say, well, I'll tell you what, I know some people who have it. And you know what? There's probably some things in your life that you still need to fix, that you need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you so that you correct. But never say, that's who they are, that's the way they are, that's the way, that's the way they're always going to be. We can't say that as Christians. We, we believe that God can work in the most difficult of circumstances. I know a fellow who's serving the Lord today, very, very, very active, who was married, let me see, make sure I got four fingers, okay, four times, four times, I mean, miserable marriages, I mean, every, the first three, the first three. And, and he finally allowed the Lord to get a hold of him. And of course, and, and let me just tell you, I don't want anybody to have to go through four marriages to figure this out. I wouldn't want you to have to go through two. I, I, I just believe that nobody should have to have more than two mother-in-laws. No, just kidding. <laughs> Can I just say this? This guy today is serving the Lord, loving the Lord, and faithful to his wife, and they have... They've been married now probably nearly 20 years, and uh, 
God got a hold of his heart, and, and big things can happen. Never give up. Never believe that it's too late for anyone, and especially don't think that it's too late for you. Don't think that you're beyond uh, being corrected or, or seeing an issue that can be fixed. Quickly, quickly. Uh, did I just do E? I think I did. Yes, I did. F. Some are victims of the cruelty of war. You say, well, why do you bring that up all right in the middle of everything? Can I tell you, in the lives in which we live, sometimes we forget what some people are going through today. Uh, other Christians. Did you know that there are more that are martyred for the faith today in the, in the last century than in all of Earth's history? People don't think about that. They don't think about what is going on even today. Um, we still pray for this pastor who, who, uh, who still may lose his life. As, as far as I know, he hasn't been released uh, in Iraq, or Iran, actually, uh, for simply being a Christian. And, and war is terrible, and it is ugly, and it is uh, a cruel, cruel thing. Some are lying by the road of life because of the prejudice and hatred of others. You know, there is no place in God's family for prejudice, for hatred towards a, an entire people group. I mean, how crazy is that? I mean, after it's all said and done, isn't that about the, the saddest thing in the world? Secondly, secondly, we see an unneighborly spirit demonstrated. The priest came by and in a cold-hearted cold selfishness passed by on the other side of the road. You know, I'll tell you, um, again, you can talk all the talk you want and you can tell everybody how spiritual you are. People want to see it. People want to see it. The Levite came by and demonstrated inhuman behavior. With a cool and calculated selfishness, he hastily passed by on the other side. There wasn't any love in his heart. He was a Levite. He was supposed to be a, 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 a faithful uh, Hebrew. When those of us who profess to be followers of Jesus Christ show no concern... For the unsaved, when we do not put forth an effort to train ourselves for effective service, when we do not support God's work with our finances, when we are critical of those who are in positions of leadership, and when we do not actively participate in ministry, we are acting with the same indifference as that exhibited in the priest and the Levite. And can I tell you something? There's no place in God's house for that. And finally, thirdly, a compassionate neighbor. A compassionate neighbor. The Samaritan had seeing eyes and hearing ears. Hey, have you ever gotten around someone who seems to be so into themselves, they're totally oblivious to everything else that's going on around them? Have you ever gotten around some folks who have children and you would think, are they the only ones that know their kids aren't here? <laughs> uh, have you ever been in a store with someone whose kids are pretty much uh, running free and doing whatever they want to do? And, and you would think the parents haven't seemed to, don't seem to have any clue about it. Can I tell you, we too often walk around uh, with our eyes closed and our ears uh, shut. I don't know how you shut your ears, but... Well, you're not hearing anyway, however you might do it. Ears plugged, how about that? And, you know, we're so busily thinking about our problems and our next issue and everything else. The Samaritan had seen eyes and hearing ears. The Samaritan had a compassionate heart. Again, don't forget, don't forget. If this were 2,000 years ago and you were a Jew, what would your attitude be towards a Samaritan? You would think of them as less than a than a human being. You would think of them as, as a, a, you know, someone who didn't deserve any respect. You, you would not, as a, as a particular group of people, you would not be looking at them in a very um, loving way or 
even think very much of him. It was this Samaritan who demonstrated a compassionate heart. The Samaritan had willing hands and a generous heart. He chose the way of personal inconvenience that he might render service. You know, isn't that us? Really, think about it. Hey, I, I'm ready. Can I help you? Listen, is there anything you need? Is there anything I can do to help you? And then the moment the person begins to start to tell you something, you're checking your watch and you're looking. And you're, I, I gotta, I'll be back, you know. You know what? A compassionate heart says you're willing to suffer a little bit of inconvenience. Amen? You're willing to go through a little bit of trouble. You're willing for your schedule to be interrupted. He chose the way that led to personal uh, expense on behalf of another. Don't you love this? Listen, I'll pay for uh, him, and if there's anything that's owed, uh, I'll pick up the rest of the tab. He chose to walk in the way that seemed to be unpopular, for the priest and the Levite had already set the pattern. Look at here's the big shot priest and the big shot Levite, these big high and mighty religious types, and they walk right by. He chose, what he really chose was the right way. He chose the right way. He chose the way that led to joy for his own heart and the way that led to health and happiness for the victim. Can I tell you something? Jesus encouraged the lawyer to follow the example of the compassionate Samaritan. Go and do thou likewise. Go and do thou likewise. We're to be good neighbors. We must be both the spiritual and material neighbor that we need to be. You know, uh, if you're not willing to help somebody when they're trying to get some groceries into their house or, or, or whatever the need might be, simple little acts of kindness, how interested are they going to be in you when you start to tell them about Jesus? They're going to be thinking about your demeanor, your manner, your witness, aren't they? They're going to... Neighbors want neighborly neighbors, and neighborly neighbors can witness to their neighbors. There's no doubt about that. And, and by the way, who is our neighbor? The whole world is our neighbor. There is no way to serve the Lord except as we demonstrate love and helpfulness toward those in need. In demonstrating love for our neighbors, we demonstrate love for the Lord. You know what? I'll tell you something. I am so thankful I'm saved. I still am just overwhelmed when I think about how the Lord would save just like the song says, a wretch like me. And if you think of yourself any more highly than that, you're probably thinking too highly of yourself. How, how can we not recognize that people, people want to understand this compassionate Christ that, that loved us so much that he died for us? They're only going to see it if they see that same compassion in us. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Did you know that every time you're kind to someone, every time you give someone a glass of water, every time you let your, your busy appointment schedule uh, be interrupted, you're not doing it for Christ, you're doing it unto Christ. You're doing it unto Christ. The question is not, who is my neighbor, but whose neighbor am I? Amen? Amen and amen. Okay, let's get to praying here. And uh, I, I need to see if I can get a helper. Uh, who, Sodi is not feeling well tonight. She, uh, she called me and said she wasn't going to make it. She normally writes down prayer requests. Is anybody, would anybody like to volunteer to help me with that and just write down the prayer request? And what you do is you just, can you do that for me? All right. And just, uh, you just give those to Mrs. Miller. That way they get into the prayer sheet. And don't forget that, by the way, uh, you can, uh, obviously, Anita follows a lot of the texting that we do, and, and that's one way to get something in the prayer sheet. Another way is just to simply tell her. Another way is if it comes up on a Wednesday night, it'll end up in the prayer sheet. So just uh, write down those prayer requests, and, uh, and we'll get those uh, uh, to Mrs. Miller. Appreciate you doing that. What a blessing. And how about it? Prayer requests. Prayer requests, praise report. Anybody? Yeah, Janelle.